You're ready for the pain, and feel completely dirty when you're done. Irvin, are you ready for blast off? <laughs> I told you not to eat Indian food, man. How are you blasted off? <laughs> Prematurely. We are the Three Guys Ranch. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel good. Call us at 855-693-GUYS. And if you didn't understand that, let me tell you to English, because that was Puerto Rico. You are listening to the Three Guys Rant. 855-693-GUYS. That's 693-4896. 693? I love me some three guys. All right, apparently we're back. We're on. Everybody's a little honked up. Phones are still running. There's no, um, yeah, we're a little jacked up here, gentlemen. I was going to say, talk about cutting it close. I don't know if we've ever cut it this close before. My headphones aren't even on. But uh, before we get into... Uh, Most people will say your head is not even on. <laughs> that, might be, that might be the case. But before uh, we get into a little alien probing, just want to say, everybody, thank you for, uh, I guess, being safe and being able to come back today and listen to us after 4th of July. What how, is do, we, how do you know everybody's back? Because all three of us are back in the room. Oh, all right. But what is it with you and probing? Why does it always have to go there? What oh. is today? Today is a special day for a little anal probing. You have no idea what today the anniversary is? Yeah, I know exactly what it is, but <laughs> how we went from aliens and you taking it in the butt are just... Whoa, in, whoa, in, the, whoa, in, the whoa. First, in the first 30 seconds. You couldn't first even off, get it wasn't even. Again. I didn't say it was me. You said it was an alien, so it must be you. I have nothing <laughs> against... <laughs> taking it in the butt? <laughs> no, against what you do in your free time. We've talked about that. I'm glad that you can finally marry your life partner. But, well, we're going to um, talk about that in a minute. But uh, no, no. First off, you know, um, I know it was Mikey's birthday for Fourth of July. That's so right. Thank you, America, for celebrating. And I gotta do. I gotta say, there was. I, I know you never check, but there was quite a few different. Uh, not different. Quite a few happy birthdays that came through for your birthday, through Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. So I, I did look at it. I did look at it on Facebook at least over the weekend, and I replied. I said thank you to everybody. Did you? In one one post, well, I <laughs> replied to everybody. <laughs> yeah, all two people, huh? Yeah. So what did you do for your birthday? Nothing. We're home mellow with the family, hung out, uh, made some hot dogs and burgers, and that was it, really. No pozole? No pozole this time. <laughs> and there was no wine or cheese. So you're Well, moving. there was cheese for the cheeseburgers. You no, moved. I, I, I. Clarify. Or for the nachos. Clarify. They had to send out for the cheese. Because when we got there, they said, do you like cheeseburgers or hamburgers? My wife said cheeseburgers. They're like, well, that's too bad. We have no cheese. <laughs> okay. So you, you ran out of government cheese? Well, we, we made it happen, though. And, and, you know, I mean, so I'm just saying, in typical Puerto Rican fashion. I sent uh, my boy know. back. He he milked the bull, and we had cheese. You sent your what back? My boy out back. He milked the bull, and we had cheese. I don't think I don't think you ate cheese if you're milking a bull. Yeah, I well, got I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. The kind of cheese you like. <laughs> I, I want nothing that that bull is giving you. Wow. And apparently one of the nut jobs listening in the lobby is already laughing at that comment. And... <laughs> I'm you heard that, you, huh? I just, it's filthy with the two of you already. Um, yeah, I'm sure our buddy in Australia has got to be saying, really, I want to do this? You know what? He probably fits, feels like he fits right at home. But the reason, you know, besides, besides Mikey's birthday, the other reason I want to talk about 4th of July is, for anybody that knows me, I'm kind of a homebody. Don't really like going I outside. I thought you were going to say homo, but good. <laughs> <laughs> really? Anyways... Uh, stayed at home, invited some people over, just kind of uh, had... Uh, I guess we're not people, because did you get an invite? Alan, nope. did you get an invite? No, right. I, I didn't get Again, invite. I said homebody and I like being left alone. So there was only like one other person there. You understand the contradiction in, I'm a homebody, I want to be left alone, but I invited some people over. Okay, and, so that, that and <laughs> one person does not make people. And, and usually when, when, you, when you claim you're a homebody and you want to be left alone, but you invited somebody over from Backpage.com, that's called prostitution in the state of California. You know what? And if there was no money exchange, it is not considered prostitution. It is exchange of favors. It, it was a, strictly a donation. She was nonprofit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair Why enough. do you think she would show up at Arvin's house? <laughs> Fair enough. Because it's a nonprofit. But no, it's 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 the, the person that came over is actually not from, uh, what, would, what would be the right word, being politically correct? She's not for, from Backpage.com? She's from Backdoor.com? That might be it, too. Right. But uh, from 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 not the high echelons of communities like the one that I live in. 
So I didn't think much was going to happen, but apparently, regardless, I guess if you have money. Just for the record, it's upper echelons, That's not what high I, echelons. That's what I said. Okay. Um, where I live, there's. I mean, just for the record, where uh, you live, you it's not, it's, there's no upper anything. I, I the upper floor, I guess, in your house. I know, I know <laughs> I don't live up in the hills the way you do the hills of, hills of the ghetto. That's right. Ghetto hills. But apparently nobody gives a crap where i live that there is no fireworks allowed in the city because i gotta say there was no need to go out to the beach or go to any park or anything like that because it was a free show for at least two and a half hours of all illegal fireworks i just sat out in the backyard and just looked up so i don't know where the cops were i don't know even know if there was any tickets given out or any fires or anything like that but it was good do you uh do you know or have you ever known anybody who got a ticket for fireworks because i know i've been places to where the cops have shown up but i don't know what happened because i was hiding in the bush because i mean they i would think they have a lot more to worry about <laughs> that look on phil's face <laughs> I, I would think that they have a lot more serious crimes to worry about on the fourth of july with drunk drivers and whatnot than to be driving around giving tickets for fireworks i, I don't know yeah, but you're drunk. Are you driving around on 4th of July? No. You're usually at home drinking. Right. So I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think 4th of July is is pretty much get smashed at your house and just look up. I know for you it's an everyday thing, but I don't know if there was a lot of drivers out. I saw a lot of activity in regards to people walking around, but not a lot of cars moving around. Interesting. Phil? I got nothing. I mean, I, I don't... You know, I was reading your topic, and, and and I was waiting for you to cover the rest of it because what your topic said, you wanted to cover the fireworks, and that it just seems like the only time people pay attention is based on where they live. Pay attention to what? Well, I don't know. That's what your note said. Pay attention to you know the fact that there's no oh. fireworks allowed in their city. Oh, that they don't pay attention. Right. Right. So again, I know my city. There was. Mike, two- I'm helping him with his topic just so we can right. move it along okay. because. <laughs> No, because I know in regards to the news, I think there was two stories that were specifically in this city where people got arrested. I don't know where the hell then everybody no, that else. was prior to. Well, there was a the lot. Of, I mean, in any direction you look in, there was they were just going off. I mean, since we're talking about fireworks, I guess, um, I'm sure you heard about the Simi Valley fireworks show. No. Okay. Uh, apparently when he's alone, he... Um, Looking up at the stars. <laughs> that's it. Hiding behind a bush. I'm waiting for, for the aliens to come back for me. With an illegal alien anally probing him, he doesn't <laughs> read anything. There okay. was a, a city-sponsored fireworks show, and apparently the stand uh, where the fireworks were, were set up tilted over as it lit, and it hit a bunch of people. 28 people were hurt, injured. Uh, I had not so heard that. But come on, that's uh, a show. I know that that's, that's a show because yeah. when you're a kid and you're sitting there in the back, you're praying for something to blow up. Right. Oh, you're praying to see the human candlestick. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Unfortunately, that has a different meaning for you. <laughs> so it's, okay. So but please, what is my meaning? <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just curious to see what my meaning is. Yeah, but that 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 just sucks, man. You decide, you know, well, I'm gonna take my kids to the park to watch the city-sponsored fireworks show. It should be safe. But that's and my question. Like Normally, isn't there like a good 50 feet between you and whatever's being lit? There was more than that. Yeah, but if if they kind of tilt to the side and start shooting out, they're going to get you. You do realize that when most I, of I've fireworks, actually seen that happen in person. You do realize that when most fireworks go off, they shoot up about three, 400 feet. So if you're 100 feet away, pretty good chance you're still going to get nailed if it goes uh, horizontal versus vertical. No, I'm glad since it was in Simi Valley, it didn't catch a trailer park on fire or nothing like that up there. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, that's uh, any relationship to the uh, crack and meth houses out in the other direction? No, over there, it would have blown up some houses for <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> the fumes coming out through the windows, forget it. The whole city would have been up in flames. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, so today's uh, the 66th anniversary of Roswell. So how is it you went from fireworks? You you started because I'm, so, I'm still talking. You about want to the talk whole about an anniversary? Thing. Let's talk about you know again. Well, we're talking why. about anniversaries, anniversaries and birthdays. <sighs> okay. So 66th anniversary to Roswell. Don't you want to talk about Roswell? Arvin can't wait for three more years because once they get to the 69th anniversary of Roswell, he's... Oh, forget it. Arvin's no, no, no. his own show. But you know you know why? I mean, who knows if it really happened? There, there's conspiracy theories on both sides. But I don't know if you've been on Google today. 
Have you guys been on Google? The, yeah. the cool little game. That's probably the coolest one I've ever seen. The Google Doodles. Okay. You haven't seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Now, I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for that that today was the 66th anniversary. I think I've seen better, but. Then that one? I thought the Pac-Man one was good. I never saw that one. Wow, the Pac-Man was great. You could play Pac-Man. But even the turkey one they had a couple of years ago where you could change the shoes on the turkey for Thanksgiving. That was awesome. Change the shoes for turkeys? Oh, yeah, man. There, there's a crazy person out in the lobby. I thought she was going to wet herself <laughs> because you could change the shoes on the turkey. You could change the feathers on the turkey. Oh, that was great, man. It was good fun. So Thanksgiving. does a turkey have shoes so it can run so it doesn't get shot? See, I don't ask questions like that, dude. It's a Google Doodle. Okay, it was a picture of a turkey with shoes. Let me ask you this, and is there any that way... Was, that was one jive turkey. <laughs> oh. Well, let's just start pissing everybody off. Now, the Google Doodles, can you ever go back and play them after the days passed? See, there's a Google Doodle for today. It's a little alien. Looks right. like Mike from Monsters U, man. I don't know where... I'm pretty I'll sure he's got let, me, let me see if I can go see where Google Doodles go to die. <laughs> but anyways, it, it, it was cool. You know, the spaceship crashes. It seems like it's in Roswell. And then you basically have to put the whole spaceship back together. And once you do, if you figure it out, uh, it's not too complicated. Um, you get back in your spaceship and take off. Wow. Is that why you were so quiet for the past two hours on your desk? No, it only took me like 30 seconds to figure it out. Sure. But I was intrigued by all the pictures that actually came up of Roswell. I, I didn't know that there was a whole museum and all kinds of stuff to it. Yes, there is. And there's a lot of uh, shops that that's See, what their business is all about. See, there's there's a whole, and I guess it used to be an old movie theater, but they have the actual crash line crash landing site in there, and the way that they think it is, you know, they actually have signs all over the place that say UFO crash site of 1947. Um, is it is it closed off? Because I've heard before that you can actually get shot by the military or something like that out there. Well, it's still a military installation. So you think it really happened? No, but Roswell. I, well, Roswell exists, Area 51. No, no. Well, right. That's Area 51, but Roswell, New Mexico, I don't know if it's a military installation or not. That is still a top secret base. That's what I thought. That's what I had heard. I don't I don't think so. But okay. We're going we're to signal that we're going to the first break here. So, uh, good. And just for the record, you can go to google.com forward slash doodles. And apparently every doodle they've ever done is on that page. So we find can the find one with the turkey, man. We can find the turkey? Uh, I'll try to find you the turkey, Arvin. All right. <laughs> we'll be back after this. You listen to the three guys rant on the Rant Radio Network, and when we come back, you're going to see <laughs> Arvin. You better stretch that one with a turkey. <laughs> We're the Brothers Bear Podcast Live, and I'm your host, Sanch, and I'm always joined by... Edgar. Carlos Madrano, And this is a show where we talk about... Comics? Movies? TV? Video games? Stand-up? Music? And many more geeky things? Catch us live on Rant Radio Network on Mondays from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's another commercial in the back. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. TicketSurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The TicketSurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech. And we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Stop. 
live from Los Angeles at Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break, and Arvin had something. What were you going to show us? Show you? Share with us? That was during the break, but I had to put my pants back on. <laughs> All right. Since so Arvin's you, you carrying, wanted to show you something small. Arvin's carrying today's show. He has another topic, and I'd swear, dude, mm-hmm. he's just venting. But go ahead. How? What? What the hell is it with all these with all these sounds? Oh, we have a call. Uh, Pick a blank one. Caller, are you there? Hello. Hello. Okay. We're on hold. No, we're not on hold. We're on air. Oh, we're on air. Okay, we're on air. <laughs> There's PMOS. P. Uh, how you hey doing? Hey guys. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. How you guys been? Been great. Been great. So for anybody that's actually heard us over the X amount of years, we've actually had P. Moss on before, right before, uh, I guess the apocalypse, because I know we had a couple of different questions about, uh, I think we had the <laughs> zombie guys in the same day. But P. Moss, how you doing? I'm doing great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for anybody that's, uh, you know, that's new to the show? Well, I uh, I own the coolest bars in the world, the Double Down Saloons in Las Vegas and New York City, and Frankie's Tiki Room in Las Vegas. Uh, my band, the Bloodcocks UK, uh, we play songs about having sex with Martian girls and stuff like that, and uh, we're about to uh, release a new record and uh, touring Japan in, in October. And I've got a new book out, which is a Tiki cocktail book, which is, um, it's, it's, it's great. I was I was just going to swear three different times when I held myself back. <laughs> we uh, appreciate that, but it's that great. It's it's just cool as hell, and uh, it tells a little bit about. It's called Liquid Vacation, and it tells a little bit about tiki history. And it's got seventy seven drink recipes in there. Um, Seventeen of them are classics, like the Mai Tai and the zombie things that people know about, and sixty of them are original Frankie's drinks that uh, up until now the re- the recipes have been secret. And it's a beautiful book. It's a coffee table book and uh, beautiful photography and recipes. And uh, the whole angle of it is that these are the most delicious drinks in the world. And with this book, anybody can make them at home in their kitchen. Now, now the that's first, what I got. The first thing I'm going to say is, Phil, that's how you bring a show completely around. Because this, <laughs> this goes back to Mikey's birthday on the liquid diet, number one. That's and right. then we were talking about Roswell, so he started talking about having sex with Martian girls. That's how you do a Man, show, I, Phil. I hit, it, I hit all the bases, didn't I? That's right. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing you like Love is when he, when he said blood cock. You know what? I didn't even hear that part. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny how you picked up on that. Yeah. Hey, Frank, real quick. Uh, I mean, uh, P-Moss. I'm, I'm looking at the Frankie's original Tiki drinks. Oh. Sorry. Uh, now, is it? can a man go to a bar... And order him, himself a tiki drink and still uh, look you know, manly. You know what? That, still be a man? that is a, right, a perfectly good question because I've made fun of friends that do that. So what is the answer to that? No, no, absolutely. See, there's a big difference between going to some stupid place and ordering a, a, a fruity drink with an umbrella in it. That's absolutely ridiculous. And no, he's not a man. Okay. But if you go into a, an authentic tiki bar and order an authentic tiki drink, yes, you are a man because generally those drinks will knock you on your ass. Yeah, I'm looking at this Wild Watusi. Uh, the Wild Watusi, yes. Yeah, it's got all these rooms and it's got a, a 160 proof float. A hundred and what? Yeah, yeah. 60 proof. <laughs> yeah, that's just a little accent for you. It's uh, just to, to keep you honest. There you go. But well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It'll knock you on your ass. So I got a question. So I know Mike asked a question about being a man ordering a tiki drink. What happens when Arvin walks into one of your three bars, especially the New York one, and orders his Shirley Temple? Why? Why I'd do I kick him out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why do I have to be the butt of that joke? Because <laughs> you know no, where you it was go going. you go in with a girl. You have the girl order the Shirley Temple, and then you switch drinks with her. That's all. And there nobody will go. be any of the wiser. See, Mikey, that means that there's no hope for you because you're always there going you into go. bars with other men. See, but Arvin's problem is he always tries to say he's in control, so he doesn't want anybody ordering for him. You know, that oh is true. God. That is absolutely true. He's got trouble then. Oh, we know that. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I think he needs to stay home a lot. <laughs> you know, maybe make some drinks from this book, you know? 
You know what? It it does sound it does sound like I'm gonna have to pick up a copy of this book. And out of curiosity, how many how many books is this now? Uh, this is three. My first two, uh, uh, Blue Vegas and Vegas Knockout, uh, were fiction, and this is a nonfiction book. My first nonfiction book. Now we're looking at a picture here of raising the bar. Is that another book? Uh, no, I think that was just the title of an article. I think in the L.A. Times, just about about me and my stuff. Okay, right on. Well, you know, we're actually probably going to be in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Maybe we should stop by and try one of these drinks, man. Oh yes, you should. You should <laughs> try more than one. Now, what is, what's the name of the places again in Vegas? Frankie's it's Tiki Room. Frankie's Tiki Room, and the other. Uh, that's it's a beautiful tiki bar, but again, don't let the beauty throw you because you can uh, have some fun in there. And the other bar is the Double Down Saloon, which is a punk rock dive. And uh, man, you got both ends of the spectrum there, and you can have a lot of fun both places. Now, just out of curiosity, just because everybody knows Vegas from the Strip, how far are they from the Strip? Uh, Double Down is just a couple blocks from the Strip, uh, right by the Hard Rock Hotel, it's right across the street. And Frankie's is a couple blocks off the strip near downtown, so they're they're both very very close in. You know what? I think we're gonna have to stop by and check it out. Yeah, at least yeah. And they're open twenty four hours every day. It says. Oh wow! Twenty four really? seven. We never close. There you go, man. Now that's a bar. You know, they should <laughs> have those hours here in California, man. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that's what we uh, need. Well, we need more of yeah. those hours. At least over there, you can walk to your room. Now, out of curiosity, <laughs> how how many uh, patrons do you have there at like four, five, six in the morning? Four, five, six in the morning are, are really prime hours because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, pe- people don't need to binge drink at 2 o'clock before they get kicked out. They can they can stay as long as they want, and, and it's Las Vegas, so a lot of people get off work at, you know, 2, 3, 4 in the morning and, you know, want to go have a drink. So bars are usually pretty crowded until about 6, maybe 7, and, you know, sometimes, depending upon the action, you know, you gotta, you got some hot girls in there monkeying around, the guys will stay and it's crowded till noon. You know, then you start all over again. I gotta say, I that's love pretty cool. I love girls and their monkeys. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> I think I just found the new place to cruise on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yes. Other than Sunset Boulevard? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think he wants you there, bro. I don't think he wants you. Oh there, man, <clears throat> I, I, I'm following you. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should go try to do a remote from there, man. At three in the morning. With a twenty-four, with a, tw- you know what? That would be interesting. Yes, it would. Hey, what, what's the uh, what's the New York room like? Um, New York is nice. It's a, it's a punk rock dive, uh, but it closes at four a.m., which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but it's basically the same thing, you know. It's a uh, you know it's got a got a punk rock jukebox and a lot of strong drinks, and it's always packed. A lot of hot girls and it's everything you want. Can't ask for much more than that, can you? Oh, the only thing one of the brings a touch of class to New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I and like and it. one of the one of the drinks over there is uh, ass juice, something Arvin loves. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, no, you know what? You can laugh all you want, but last year we sold our millionth shot of ass juice. Oh, Arvin, uh, Arvin surpassed that. <laughs> let, let, let me ask this: Do more men order that, or do more women order that? Uh both. It's it's delicious. It's you know, don't let the name throw you. It'll knock you on your ass. But it's delicious, and uh, uh, it's just a great shot. And we, we really have sold a million of them over the years. I mean, it took, it took 19 years to do that, but we had a, we had a countdown, and, and some tourists from Washington, D.C. Uh, won the, uh, drank the million, ordered the millionth shot, and he won all sorts of prizes. He won a, he won a snowboard and a whole bunch of stuff, and he was very, very happy. So, awesome. you know, balloons fell out of the ceiling, and it was like an Ed McMahon moment, except uh, without the money. I now, like it. I like did, it. And, and you're in your ass. Oh yeah. Now, did did he know it was coming, or just at random the register just started? No, he just he just randomly came in because he liked the bar. He didn't know that you know we were getting close to a million, and he just happened to be the guy that happened to order it. You know, a lot of people were trying to, and he just happened to be the one. Well, the only thing that I've really heard from this whole interview is that if you go to one of your bars, you're going to get some ass juice. You're gonna get knocked on your ass, and there's hot <laughs> girls everywhere. So I mean, that's playing with monkeys. <laughs> and playing with monkeys. So that's like the playing with monkeys. I mean, what else do you need in a bar, for God's sake? <laughs> there's nothing like some good monkey and ass juice just flowing back and forth. Oh, <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I just found the greatest gift for Arvin. Okay, this is gonna be Arvin's Christmas stocking because I was looking here. He's got some. He's got a great Christmas, uh, great Christmas item. But this one for Arvin says, "Out of our ass into your glass." 
That is yeah, that's oh. the slogan for ass juice. It's, it's got yeah. that beautiful logo of the skeleton, uh, you know, squatting over the. That the, is the, the, You know what? You know what? Yes. I, I think I have the 2013 edition. We well, should you know go. What? We you should go. Great well, stuff here. In your we, side, we, sh- we should go from out of your ass, or from uh, from out of our ass into your mouth. That's what 2013 edition should be. No, man. No. See, why you know, that's a it, different man? bar altogether. Actually, that's a different lifestyle altogether. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Dude, that, that, it that, sounds that, like that. some of you guys know all about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, well, hey, hey, no, let's, no, well, one, one, of one of us guys. One Harvey. of us guys. Yeah, one of you guys does, I know. Yeah, I was going to say, because the, the whole sum, the sum, of, you know, the, the, the sum of the equation there just makes me nervous. I want to make sure that we're separated from Arvin. <laughs> no, but you got some great stuff yeah, right here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Great stuff here on your site at DoubleDownSaloon.com. Uh, yes. At the shop, and you have some really cool shirts, man. I think I'm gonna buy some. It's pretty oh, nice. there you go. The Rob Ruckus bobblehead. There's a lot of stuff on there too. The, oh, awesome. The who? The what? Rob Ruckus bobblehead. Las Vegas' favorite punk rock icon, a part-time chicken effer. That is a chicken effer. <laughs> That's what it says. No, you know, you want to know something about that bobblehead? Um, there are only maybe about maybe thirty or forty of those left, but he is about to become. I can't say the name of the show. But he is about to become in the next month or so a major TV star. Oh, so all of a sudden, those bobbleheads are going to be worth a lot of money. Oh, we should so get one. Them. I got to give me some chicken effort bobbleheads. So, yeah, too. that would be a very good idea. Hey, Pimos, we're coming to the end of the uh, segment here. Uh, how what? do pe- how do people get a hold of you? Is there anything that you want to? I know if you can give the name of the book again. Uh, the book is called Liquid Vacation, and uh, it's available everywhere. And uh, it's just 77 uh, tropical tiki drinks, and it's a, it's a beautiful book, and it's a fun book, and everybody should buy it. Outstanding. And how can people reach you? Uh, they can just uh, go to doubledownsaloon.com and send an email, and it'll get to me. Okay, right. perfect, perfect. Well, again, thank you very much. Anytime you have uh, a new book or anything else you want to promote, come on back. And if all goes well, hey, I won't be there, but the guys are going to see you, you the week of the 24th. Always. And, uh, yeah, the week of the 22nd, we'll be in Vegas. Maybe we'll come look you up. Love it. Can't wait. I'm all just right? going to go up and down the strip asking for ass juice. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Pimos. Thanks for calling in. Take care. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, again, this is the Three Guys Rant at Rent and Radio Network. Make sure to uh, stick around and see what else is going to be shooting around here. <laughs> Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. 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 You have entered the Twilight Zone. Uh, just kidding. It's only Rat Radio Network. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. DM Narc Radio Show is now airing on the Rant Radio Network. You've heard the three guys Rant refer to us as the Clam Chowder Power Hour. Now we get to bring our New England humor over to Los Angeles. We'll be airing Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern, and we'll cover everything from local to national politics and news. Guess what? We're uncensored, too. I'm Dave. Join me and Nick Friday on the Rant Radio Network. TicketSurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The TicketSurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. 
exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break, and uh, let's get into some uh, funner stuff here. Starting next Monday, the slogan is, the sweetest comeback in the history of ever. And that would be for? Hey, were you there that night? Hostess Twinkies oh, 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 will yeah. be back on store shelves Next Monday. Are you talking about something else? And you know, they're not doing anything new, right? They're, are they revamping nope. anything? Nope. So about the only thing that changed, the only thing that changed was right before the company went bankrupt, they had just finished fixing their formula that even though people thought they would last until the second coming, they only had a 26-day shelf life. Now they're going to have a 45-day. I'm going to say day. BS. Because I've had Twinkies that are probably like two or three years old. Hold on. It's, well, again, it's, it's called, you know, for freshness. You can have them older, but they're a little they're a little funky, a little spongy. Yeah. So if you want them, you know, super soft or whatever. But by next Monday, if all goes well, they will be back on shelves. And what's funny is this weekend when I was out at the store, you can see how everyone is trying to steal a piece of that pie. The pinguinos, you know, your 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 beaner brands that you eat, Irvin. You know, like the bean dude. Your 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 beaner people. Why why does it have to be my beaner people? Stuffed it with Look at jelly. That. Even he cut you off, okay. man. He's like, don't you talk about people yeah. like that. They stuffed it with jelly. That's disgusting. Well, that, they, jelly that's a, with that's bread? a different product that they've had for a while, though, right? Right, right, right. But they're trying, they're trying to, they've been trying to mainstream it because, you know, Twinkies was gone. Sarah Lee came out with one. 7-Eleven uh, came Debbie out with Debbie came out with one. 7-Eleven came out with their own version. There's been a whole bunch of copycats out there, and they all suck. I've tried them all. And you know what? And I don't even doubt that. So all I know is that <laughs> next week... Twinkies are back. So not even the packaging is the, the box. Everything's identical. Right there, baby. The only thing missing that they're not showing, and I'm wondering if he's. Oh no, there he is. Twinkie the kid. Twinkie the kid is still on the box. It would appear. So. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, right? thank you, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. They, they bring it back and they don't tweak anything. They don't try to do like the, the new Coke. Or no, something no, like no, nothing ridiculous like that. So this way, you know, all you fat kids out there who are uh, craving for some some new sugar, another Pre reason to become prepare obese. to be fatter. There you go, baby. That's right. So, sneak, uh, sneak him into class, kids. Uh, sneak him into class. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> when, you, when you sneak those into school, you could get test them. results. And you, you could sell them. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah, Twinkies were like gold. You can what sell school them. did you go to? Dude, because you know what? The stupidest thing. You could buy every chocolate bar, every crack snack you could think of at our snack bar. Right. But Twinkies, cupcakes, you know, that came in the two packs or whatever. And ho hos. Ho hos. Those weren't allowed. There was tons of ho hos at my school. Yeah, well, we're talking about edible. <laughs> oh, they were edible. <laughs> in packages. <laughs> Oh, they were covered, covered in. Oh, you're just filthy. All right. So on to other happy news. Uh, anybody wait, go to Louis this weekend? <clears throat> uh, you mean like actually paid, sat in a no, movie theater? No, no. Okay, no. so you didn't go, but I did um, see movies. You did see movies. All right. Um, fine. Let's start with you. What did you see? I saw Monsters University. How was it? That one was good. I really did like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Peoples. How was that? That's got a. Uh, I feel bad that it even who, has Tyler that Perry's way? movie name on it. Oh, uh, that's the, Tyler the, the latest Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, but isn't that part of the trend though? I mean, most people, and again, I can't say. So I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna sound like Arvin for a second, since I don't watch a lot of Tyler. I've never seen any Tyler Perry movie. Almost everyone I've ever spoken to said that every one of his movies sucks balls. But that they do extremely well because it's for black folks. And it's in the African-American communities right. that he does extremely well, but that the movies are never well First off, made. I would never say African-American community, so you don't sound like me. Okay, well, hold on. Where I'm going with that, though, is you said you feel bad for Tyler Perry's name on it. So all I'm saying is- I enjoy the movies. But was it in Dick? So you like all of his movies? You like yeah, Medea and yeah, all that? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. they're funny. Okay. I think they're funny. I okay. think even, even the movies that are plays- um, are enjoyable, but this one, I mean, 15, 20 minutes into it, I just thought it was really bad. I really did feel bad it had his name behind it. But what, what was Greer it about it? I mean, what was it about? Um, Is it a comedy? It, it's it's a comedy. It's it's almost to where, you know, they're, they're, it's a couple that's probably in their mid to late 30s, maybe even older than that. 
you know, she she brings them home to meet the parents out in Boston or wherever. Has no idea. Th- the parents have no idea that uh, that they're living together. He wants to marry her. The dad is uh, an ex, uh, like Supreme Court judge of some sort. So or wasn't the dad Jane Allen Greer? Right. Okay. Right. But yeah, you usually expect him to and kind the of boyfriend's be... the guy from the office. Yeah, yeah, he was also uh, in East 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 Eastbound and Down or whatever. Okay. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff with even with with uh, with uh, Will Ferrell. Um, I just don't think they let the movie open up to their comedy potential. I just really think it fell short. It, it just it just was dry and felt like it dragged out. What else did you see? Um, Redemption. Was that any good? No. All right, moving on. Um, I know there was one more. I just can't remember. Redemption. What was that? With um, what's that guy's name from Transporter? Jason Statham. Yeah, it was with him. <clears throat> it was just. It was another one that just was really bad. Was it as bad as Parker? E, it, it, I saw Parker yeah. a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I mean, between uh, I did. I really didn't think that J Lo and him could. Make you know a what? Bad no, movie. no. Then this one was worse because that one had J Lo. All yeah, right. this one and was there's bad. All, there's always room for yellow. There's always room for some yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may. I can't. I, I can't think of what else. But uh, no, probably uh, the best one was Monsters University. Oh, I saw Red. I saw Red because I wanted to prepare for Red Two, which is coming out. Okay, that's I think the okay. fourth one wasn't horrible, but I, I was expecting a little bit more. Oh, Red Two is coming out, and that's the fourth one. I was gonna. I was gonna just kind of gloss over that for a what? second because you just said Red Two is coming out, and that was the fourth one. <laughs> Did I really? Yeah, I, I um, missed that one. So uh, no, I said I wanted to be prepared for that one. Okay. Um. Yeah, it wasn't a horrible movie. I, I'd say watch it if you had nothing else to do. But the Red Two, which is coming out, seems to be like it's going to be a really good movie. Okay. So I'm hoping, looking forward to that. Uh, we took the uh, we took my nephew. We went with uh, some family friends. We went and saw Despicable Me Two. Right. And I got to tell you, I sat through Despicable Me One. A few weeks ago, we rented it just because I wanted to catch up because mm. my nephew wanted to see it. A- and I'm I'm a fifty fifty Steve Carell fan. Some of his stuff I like, mo- most of it I hate. Um, and why you don't find him funny? Because I I feel the same way. I really but, don't. Okay. The majority of what he does, I don't find him funny. Um, but did you ever see Forty Year Old Virgin? I thought it was the stupidest movie I'd ever seen. Okay, but it was funny. I did not find any humor in it. But now with the 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 sad part about that is then I saw when he played Noah, I forget the name of that one with um Wanda and I really liked that movie. Are you talking about the uh movie, the second part to the Jim Carrey movie? The Jesus movie? Was it was it part two? Yeah, to where, the, where, okay, the Noah's Ark and whatever. Steve Carell was Noah. Right. Okay, I enjoyed that one. Right. Okay. So who's on one? Oh, okay. Um so then we saw Is that is that a Costello joke? Well, no, I've been, I've been typing. Who's on one? I see it flashing, and then I just got to notice. So anyway, we went and saw part two. I will say, if you've never seen part one, don't hurt your eyes with it. But part two was spectacular. See, that's what I was afraid of. Spar- part two I saw it, but was I'm like, so mm. damn funny. It was ridiculous. Caller, so. are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, hey, it's hold time on, for... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Arby's going to try to say your name, John. Hold on. Who's on the line, bro? It's time for some coitus. You have to turn up the microphone, boys. I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't hear us at all? Very, very minimally. In fact, you probably sound the best you've ever sounded. I can only just hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I- I'm sure when the volume is down, we do sound at our best. <laughs> well, I have to tell you guys something. You are the worst movie critics I've <laughs> ever heard in my life. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Well, that's no what news here. What the hell going on with you? It, it's Evan Almighty and Bruce Almighty are the movies you guys are talking about. That's what we said, the, the Jesus movie. What else do you want, no, John? He's right. He's right. Yeah. John, John's right. We, we do a horrible... Do- the problem, John, is that we always start in, we try to let Arvin do it, and he'll just start with... It sucked. The the, the 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 guy who was in that show, who who was in another show. Remember, he was in that movie. So, I, I, Isn't right. that the way I describe people? The guy that he was in that movie with Will Ferrell, apparently, whatever the movie that yeah, was. Apparently so. <laughs> so so John, John seems to have all the answers today, dude. I, I don't know what to tell you. Well, you know, talking about Jesus Christ, I actually thought when I first started school, I didn't start school till I was ten years old. I was in fifth class, and uh, I actually thought that my name was Jesus Christ when I was growing up, and. 
when I started school, I, all these kids asked me what my name was, and I told them it was Jesus Christ. And they said, oh, bloody bull crap, your name's not Jesus Christ. I said, it is, really, no joke. I took 35 kids home on Friday afternoon, and my dad saw them all there and went, Jesus Christ, what are all these kids doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you do have the initials, JC. That's what I was thinking. I do, I do, yes. I like How it. are you, boys? We're doing We're good. Doing well. How are you doing? How was your trip? I'm still in China right now. I'm coming to you live from Shanghai. Outstanding. Wow, nice. What time? What time is it there? It's uh, it is almost. Oh no! It's twenty minutes to nine in the morning on Tuesday morning. So oh, it's already tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to say it's not time. It's more like what day is it? See, th- this is this is how we roll. This is how technologically advanced our show is. We have a time machine. <laughs> We're talking to somebody tomorrow. <laughs> We haven't even had dinner in L.A. Hey, can you, can you look over the news and tell me what stocks to buy <laughs> here tonight? See what horse run home. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, boys, I, 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 I'm very worried about the three of you, you know? I mean, Mike, you weren't there last week. I filled in for you, and, you know, I'm about the size of your left bum cheek. I did okay, you know, but... <laughs> I, I understand you know, these I got, things. I, I got the other one up to give his brain some air, which was hilarious. I don't know if you saw the footage. Which footage? You know, when he stood up and did the star jump to give his brain some air. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was, yeah, yeah, that was just, yeah. So he, that he's, he thought I was I was kind of slow or something. He told me, come on, stand up and jump. So I was <laughs> Can you believe a man in Australia got this guy to jump up in the middle of a show? So you have don't. to understand something. Though. I keep telling you guys, but nobody because, believes me. Because he's a motivational speaker. Mike, for six years, no, no, no. no. Okay. Inspirational, okay. inspirational speaker. speaker. M- Mike, are you Mike, kidding? Dude? Mike's, Mike's, Mike's used to jumping for men. Crap this morning. I'm uh, sorry. What did you say that Mike ate a big bowl of crap this morning? Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, he, he, I, I, I gotta say, I'm disturbed at you boys. Last week I turned you on. And all I heard that you were... Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, hold on. You have never turned me on, sir. <laughs> let's, let's stop right there. <laughs> You're charged my work with Arvin, but not with worry. me. <laughs> you know, my, my wife is so lucky. She's got the only male in Australia that can drag, that can stand up and drag his willy on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got, I got, I got, I can't go anywhere with that one. It's, I, <laughs> my, Mikey's asking if he can sit on Man, now you got it. You started Arvin. Cr- he's crying over here. Uh, hey, John, I'm sorry. They're about signaling us for the break. Can you stick around for the next segment? I would love to, boys. I'm here all day. I'm here with you whenever we've got to go. All right. We're going to put you on hold for just a second. We're going to do a quick commercial break. We'll be right back, right back to you. Our stupidity live. Head over to ratradionetwork.com. <laughs> Good colors. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh. Hot and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com.
Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? A michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. pocket size? pocket size, so you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store, and you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what will make it better? After we get drunk, if they had a line we could call. We can call their drunk man. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho macho michelada. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break for the final segment. On the phone, a special guest, John Cudi from Shanghai, China. Oh, wait, wait. You realize that not in a single segment we've done so far have we introduced ourselves or who we are. Okay. Anyways, John, as you were saying... John already said we suck as critics. I mean, you know, it's no secret that we suck as hosts. I mean, come on. What do you want? Usually, Mikey just hears that he sucks. Now, you know what's funny? <laughs> Let me share this with you real quick. So over the weekend, John, I had my nine-year-old nephew visiting from Vegas. Yeah, that's why you were here last week. Correct. And so, you know, he's, he's gone back. He flew home this, uh, a few hours ago. But over the weekend, he was giving me a little flack that he was being lazy, didn't want to do certain things. And he made a comment about how he couldn't do something. So... Knowing that John is our friend, I went to the uh, internet, showed him the video. Once he saw John on the skateboard. Did you really? Yeah, no joke. No joke. I, I showed him the video of John on the skateboard. That was it. He, gave, I, I did, he didn't give me any more slack all weekend. That's pretty Wow. Awesome. Yeah. We, we got to run that here in a loop for Arvin. <laughs> <laughs> you mean when he showed his nephew, right? In, in, every, in every computer screen in the office <laughs> or in the studio. <laughs> Especially the one in the bathroom, since he spends a lot of time there. Now you got to remember, he's not an insp- he's not a motivational speaker. He's an inspirational speaker. Right. Be that as it may, and but that's what you need. So, um, to talk to us about Shanghai, China. What's going on over there? I mean, are, are you there for another week or two? Are you doing a tour? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually heading back to Australia tomorrow night. I've been. I've done a couple of seminars while I've been here on this trip. It's only been a, a very short trip. It's I've only been here about a week. It's, a, it's about an 11-hour flight each way, um, and I was here for about a week. Had a couple of really great crowds. I got mobbed this morning over at breakfast uh, down in the hotel, uh, and I actually got off with a... a oh, God, I shouldn't say that. Got off with a lady, but I, I was speaking <laughs> to a lady. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? I was speaking to a lady actually uh, from New York this morning on Skype, and it looks as though that she may be becoming an agent of mine over there, and we're planning to do a tour in the States in September. Oh, very good. Nice. So if all things work out well, boys, you'll have your uh, little paperweight sitting on the deck next to you maybe in September. Ah, that would be awesome. We'll be, we'll be more than happy to throw Arvin out of the room for you and give you his seat, no problem. Now, I'm assuming that uh, <laughs> if you're watching this... big seat. <laughs> John, John. Now I'm assuming I don't know if you're if you're watching the stream or not, but I'm assuming that this room full of people is people that came out to hear you speak. That is correct. Yes, that's uh, that was in the first one I did on this trip, uh, and and they came in, and I think we the, the room itself. Oh no, wait, that might have been from the earlier trip this year. Actually, there's three thousand people in that room right there. Wow, yeah, that's, a, that's and, a big room, and uh, that's an exercise actually that I do with them. To, to put up their arms, to uh, stretch out a little bit, then they put them down in their laps. And we talk about love and the importance of loving yourself. And, you know, uh, the old saying is you can't love yourself unless unless you love... You can't love anyone else unless you love yourself first. And, and I try and, uh, you know, push that across to these guys. It's so important. 
John, you're not being very inspirational right now. You know what I call it right now? I call it bragging because I'm looking at a room where 3,000 people are chanting and cheering you on. We've been on the radio for almost four years, and I don't think we've had 3,000 people listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get two calls, one's from Vegas and one's from Australia. That's it. <laughs> but, but i got to say something, John. Uh, I love myself a lot. <laughs> and often. Well, I've got to say there is a lot there to love. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Only by his uh, mama. I, I, I'm glad you noticed. Only by your mama. <laughs> oh, John, don't help him. There'll be no living with him after but, that. But you know, uh, what's what is funny, I was, I was looking at that picture, man, there's a lot of Chinese people there. Yeah, can you, can uh, you see the picture there now of me with that old gentleman? Yes, we just saw that. On the airplane. Now, that old gentleman is the ex-Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Nice. John Howard. All right. And, and John and I have known, Mr. Howard and I have known each other for, for quite a number of years, and and I've done a, a couple of speaking engagements with him, and I can remember... He, he's not very tall. He's about the size of a Smurf, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember actually what I did with him in, in the city of Adelaide, which is in uh, mid, mid-southern mid uh, uh, Australia. And it was billed as the Little Johnny's. It was Little Johnny and Very Little Johnny. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know which one I was. <laughs> And see, he kind of does he look like a great Papa guy, a great guy. Ar- Arvin, uh, I-, I was saying he, he kind of does look like uh, Papa Smurf. He looks more like Gargamel. He does, doesn't he? You know what he does? He looks, I mean, if, if, if we dyed his hair black, he'd be Gargamel. Gargamel. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was, you know, I apologize just in case he's listening. I don't want to offend the prior, pri- the previous prime minister of Australia. So, hey, uh, hey, John, oh, but you want to make fun of what? Barack, huh? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, John, quick yeah, question. I've got a very good sense of humor, mate. He'd be loving all this. Don't you worry. <laughs> hey, John, quick question. In Australia, have you heard about the Trayvon Martin trial? About the what, sorry? Trayvon Martin. No, I haven't. Okay, good. See, cause in, but in Australia, they're smarter than us. They no, don't no, it's care. Because it, it's a case that's happening here in Florida where this uh, vigilante, if you were, or, or a civilian killed this kid. And the trial finally started almost two years later, and the media here is just fascinated. You can hear that 24-7. It is just getting annoying as hell. And I was just wondering if the really? media all over the world was the same. Well, I'm sure they Where have their own trial? insanity Why? over there. When did the trial start? Uh, about a week ago, about eight days ago. No, well, I've been in China since then, so I'll, I'll let you know um, next Monday if, if it's when, I, when, when we do our cross, but if it's, uh, if it's in Australia... And if it has hit Australia, it, it's hit everywhere because we are just so far away from everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, I got a question about Australia. I've been trying to find an answer online. I know there was a period there about a year and a half ago. You guys had some severe, severe rain that went on for weeks. And then all we, we got an article over here at one time that said literally an entire, I don't know if it was in New, New Queensland, where an entire city had pretty much gone underwater and the water has never receded. Yeah. So, is, is, I mean, is that still the case? Did that whole city end up having to be abandoned? The the, the town where, well, what happened, we, we had a lot of rain. You're right there. We we had so much rain in southeast Queensland. And it started from about halfway down the coast, and we got a massive river system and, and dams and things like that. And there was speculation that they didn't let the dams out at the right time and, and a whole variety of things. And, it ended up being some major, major flooding. And on the top of our mountains, we've got a, a city called Toowoomba. And it's, uh, I think it may even be Queensland's biggest inland city. And when it got flooded, you could see the footage of the of the cars and, and even some small buildings just getting washed down the main streets of Toowoomba. And the water had to go somewhere, and it went straight down the mountainside and just demolished oh, wow. all the little silly, all the little... Uh, villages and, and townships in its way. It, it absolutely caused massive, massive issues. And, you know, we were very, very lucky in a way that, you know, it, it could have caused a lot major issues than what it did, but we were so lucky it didn't go another, you know, two foot higher. If it did, it would have been a major... I mean, there's a major catastrophe now, but it could have been much, much worse. Well, wow, okay. Okay, I appreciate I didn't mean to get off topic. It's just I've been trying. It, it was something that fascinated me. And our, again, our media over here will pick up on it for two days and then just dump it. They don't They don't come back to any of the stories that ever again. That is because Americans have the attention span of a fly. I understand that, but that's why I thought I'd ask a real Australian. Oh, wow. 
But you know what, though? I think that if the, if the media... I think the media actually have uh, an issue. If, as you look at that there, that's Toowoomba. If... I know that might be an actually Brisbane City itself. If the media start a story and they run it for two days and then stop running it, I think they've got to give a closure. They've got to show the end outcome. True. I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, even in writing, anything, I would... Yeah, but would, if the water never went down, that's not really an ending as of yet. You do understand that the term is if the water did not recede. Yeah. <laughs> What's the <laughs> difference? <laughs> well... <laughs> Down, recede. <laughs> Excuse me, young lady. Can you recede? <laughs> do you see? Do you see what we're up against, John? Do you see what we're up against? Hey, I don't John, know how you guys do it. Hey, John. I don't know how you put up with each other. Here's a, here's, here's a question, and it, you know, it's, it's a serious question. Um, in Australia, when you flush the toilet, does the water <laughs> swirl clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, you'll have to watch the Simpsons to work that one out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bart had that same dilemma. Really, you'd waste you'd waste precious airtime you, you know, with, with our friend John on that question. This guy's calling from you know, China. What's from wrong with you? Shanghai. Hey, I, John. I will tell you this. I will tell you. This. I am staying in a beautiful hotel here in Shanghai, and the bed is that big. It could probably get all of you three in it. <laughs> I, I've got to. I have to wake up four hours earlier just to get out of bed. <laughs> it's massive. It, don't right, put the bathtub. It's not a bathtub. It's a swimming pool. I bring my cap and goggles with me all the time and do laps. Well, and yesterday well, when I got here, I was busting to go to the toilet, so I ran in, I ripped up my pants, I climbed up on the toilet. Wait a minute, John. Down. Wait a minute, John. You, you can't run into the bathroom. Oh, okay. I, I'll, I'll be like you. I rolled into the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and I, I ripped my pants off, and I climbed up on the toilet, and I went to sit down, and the hole so big, I actually fell inside of the hole. Oh. Now, it, I, I don't know if you just saw the picture. Is that really what your room looks like? I'm sure that's just... And the mattress is twice that size. That's that's huge. Whoever's doing your uh, your photos is really quick, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what she said. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, John. Next Arvin, time you're going to go to China, you know, Arvin has always wanted to go back and uh, track down his family, so he may want to go with you. Since, since today's yep, show is only an hour... As well, it's not a problem. I need security. Well, then you don't want Arvin. As long as you don't <laughs> walk by walk by a, a buffet, we're good. <laughs> There's plenty of buffets, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> now, I'm just curious. What, boys, do they, do I, they... I, I want to be a bit curious. I want you guys to realize that no matter how bad you think you are, there's always someone worse off. Oh, we know. And if your case, boys, just look at Arvin. Cause it's the worst. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You see, that's inspirational right there. Hey, John, is there anything else you'd like to uh, sh share with the audience? That today's show is only an hour since Mondays have now been scaled back, and they're signaling us here that it's going to end in about 45 seconds. All right, I just want to say, if there's one thing in the mornings that you love to do that puts a smile on your face, what is it? Urban? You know what mine is? What's that, sir? It, it's tummy drumming. You ever got out of the chair and wrap yourself on the belly? I love tummy drumming. Huh. I'm going to try that. It's good. Bob Singer came on, night moves, and there I was, tummy drumming to the beat. <laughs> Arvin, get off me. You're not too <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, got I, got I got nothing for that one. Arvin, your drums. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Arvin? Yeah, I got nothing. Hey, John, thank you so much for calling in. We look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great trip back. Arvin makes fun of me, so I guess I'm supposed to say have fun on the plane. <laughs> Uh, that's apparently my closing statement to you now, yeah, since everyone. I sound like a dork every time I say it. But uh, have a good trip back to Australia. Thanks, boys. We'll see you on Monday. All you right. got it. Take have care. Good one. Oh, what's the famous line? Thanks, that's hey. how you do a show. And we'll be back next week. We'll, we'll be back, back Thursday. Oh, Thursday. What? Thursday next week? This week. Oh, okay. And next week. Grandma just called and said you're supposed to go home. <laughs>